All right, so uh, this video is going to be an overview of the socketing system uh, and the framework. Um, this one might be pretty long since it's you know pretty in depth of what you can do with uh, the system and how it works. Uh, so, you know, why might you know why might you use a socket? Um, I imagine a lot of people will be using it for you know a saints and sinners style inventory system, which the uh, socket system was originally based off of um, could also be used for stuff like just general validation of something entering something else like a key in a lock or a magazine uh, in your gun um, so let's just go over you know some of the examples in the scene that already exist and you know what are the required com com components and you know what do all the fields do um, so we just take a look at this, you know, socket by the entrance of the example scene. Uh, we'll see that, you know, we have a socket component. Uh, we have a, you know, a trigger collider defining, you know, uh, checking for overlap with the incoming object. We have a filter. The filter will, uh, you know, it's responsible for saying what is or is not allowed. Uh, we'll go over that in a second. And we have some other uh, hovering components that will, you know, can react to when an object enters the trigger zone, um, and it's fed uh, whether or not the object is valid or not, so it can respond. So again, just like sense and sinners, you know, this uh, this guy will scale up and down as stuff enters and exits, and we have a you know, a simple material, red or green, swap. So this little oval will return red if something's not allowed, and green if it is is allowed. Uh, so we'll go in, you know, a little more depth onto that later. Um, <clears throat> so the most important part is to set up, you know, your filter. You want to say what is allowed in the socket, right? Um, so included with the framework, there's you know two or three components that can help you get started that don't require coding. Um, so the one I'm using in the example scene is what I call the tag filter. Uh, so you can create like a library of up to 32 different tags, and you can tag your filter or your socket and your socketable item uh, with certain tags, and we'll do just you know integer comparison check. So um, how do we create this tag library, so to speak? If you just come into your project, you can do a right-click, create, hurricane, and uh, socketables here. And that will give you a, I already have one here, um, empty list of 32 items. Uh, unless you have some crazy project, this should, should be plenty, as you're essentially tagging things as you know a category of uh, something, for example, you might have a large weapon or a large slot, or maybe let's just call it large item. You might have small item, or maybe you want to tag something as small weapon for a holster, because an item wouldn't go in a holster, but a weapon would. Um, and first thing to keep in mind with this, these are not going to be string checked for validity. We'll be checking the indices. So once you put the tag in here, don't change the order. Otherwise, you would have to go and reassign all of your uh, tags that are assigned to all of your sockets and your socketables later. So again, just make sure you sign these once. Uh, you can change the name later. Just don't change the position in the list because we're using integer checking for uh, performance reasons. Uh, the string or the text is only for you know UI as you're checking the drop downs. All right, so once you've had some tags assigned, make sure you, you know, control S for save uh, to persist them. And then you would be able to come back to your socket uh, filter here and, you know, you can assign uh, this library. Most likely you would only need one. Um, you can have more than one if you want, but they're not cross-compatible with each other because they'll be checking, you know, integer versus integer. So just keep that in mind. 
um, you will now have this drop down here that will present itself with all the items that you put in your list. So again, the text is only for UI purpose. Uh, the you know framework will use the array indices for performance checking the, you know the validity of the socket. Um, and you can assign you know one to many uh, things here. So if I were to check this large item and, and small item, any socketable with a tag socketable component that has been tagged as large or small would be able to go into, into the socket. So you can um, have kind of like a, you know, or thing going on here. So only large item or small item or holster, you know, whatever your requirements are. So this guy has just been limited to large only. And then uh, on the flip side here, we'll look at, you know, the SMG has been given the tag socketable component so just a subclass of the socketable component that can be assigned you know a tag so a tag library and you know this guy is assigned as a large item so it can only fit into any tag filter that has been given the large item tag all right um <clears throat> so that's pretty simple for setting up the filtering system. Um, let's just take another look at, you know, the pistol. Uh, it's been given multiple, small item and holster. So the holsters in the example scene have been tagged as holster and the gun has been given, the pistol has been given small item and holster. That way it can go into the, you know, small item only slots and the chest over here floating. And, you know, the backpack on your left shoulder has been assigned the small item tag. And then we just take a look at the player's waist and we take a look at the holster here. We'll see the holster has been given, you know, tag socket filter. And it can only accept objects that are, you know, assigned the holster tag. All right. Um, <clears throat> trying to remember quickly what this is. Okay, so this is kind of like an and or or situation. You can say uh, the incoming socketable has to be marked with every single one that is checked if the any box is unchecked. So if it's unchecked, it'll be an and. Incoming object has to be a large, you know, a large and holster item. Uh, if you have it as any is checked, it's going to become uh, or or situation. Uh, all right, so that is pretty much a high level on the filtering system and how you can apply a filter without doing any coding. You can get up to 32 categories of, uh, you know, object type, which should be plenty uh, for most people. Um, <clears throat> all right, so with that now being said, we can go over, uh, you know, what happens after an object is socketed, and what are all the fields on the, you know, the socket itself and the socketable, you know, what do they do? So let's just go down the list here. Um, so first thing we have this idea called grab bag, uh, pardon the name, but essentially it's just what is detecting the grabbable object and um, sorting them. If you do not supply one, uh, a component will be added for you uh, by the framework when the game starts and it's going to make use of the trigger collider that you've put on the socket. Um, so you would really only add this if you wanted to have, you know, let's say a child object that has the trigger on it. Maybe you want to reposition the socket somewhere uh, for some reason. Um, but it's totally fine just to leave a simple trigger collider on your component and the framework will create the bag for you. Um, so again, this, this bag component simply is detecting using, you know, the physics engines trigger system, uh, because you could potentially have multiple objects in the trigger zone at one time. So they're going to sort them by the distance and choose the closest one. Um, so you see here, this is just automatically assigned. And then, so that's for, you know, detection of incoming objects. 
And you just need to make sure that your physics collision matrix supports uh, the layers of the you know grabbable objects and the socket itself so that they you know they overlap. All right, so grab control is a way for you to say if you want uh, the grip button or the trigger button to remove an item from the socket. So maybe you have a socket on your chest or like an ammo pouch and you want to assign them to trigger only, uh, then you cannot use grip to remove something from the socket. You would have to use the trigger because maybe you have a holster nearby and you want to assign grip only to that one. Uh, that way you're not accidentally grabbing uh, stuff uh, you know, by accident. Uh, the gripper trigger uh, would require uh, on the player controller, can trigger grab has to be true for a trigger pull to activate when gripper trigger is assigned. Uh, so keep that in mind, that can trigger grab must be enabled. Uh, anytime you see the grab control uh, field is grip or trigger. Trigger pull will do nothing unless you enable this box. However, if uh, you assign trigger only, then it doesn't matter if this is checked or not. It's going to work regardless. So uh, just something to be aware of. Um, grab detection type. On the hand, we have a, a socket bag here. And this is simply just a you know, trigger collider that is detecting sockets so that we can detect what socket is closest to our hand and whether we can you know, grab from that socket or not. Um, <clears throat> so again, the sphere is just checking for overlap with the trigger collider on sockets. Works kind of same as the grabbable bag. It's just, you know, in case you have multiple sockets near your hand, they're going to sort themselves and find the closest one. Um, so a socket detection type, you know, is again, is kind of like Saints and Sinners backpack. You will detect that the socket was hovered, and then maybe you want to scale it up or down when your hand is you know, in the zone or when the, you know, the object is in the zone. If the socket type is set to grabbable, we're no longer looking if the hand is overlapping, overlapping the socket trigger. We're now just going back to a standard you know, the grabbable objects colliders are being overlapped by the hand. <clears throat> so just depending on what use case you may have, um, you can choose either or. So hand is overlapping the socket trigger or hand is overlapping the grabbables colliders uh, for determining if you want to remove. Um, so just being flexible there, how you want to handle that. Um, Check hand overlap. Okay, yeah, so this is kind of like, let's say you have a, a shoulder socket, uh, which the demo player rig has one on the shoulder, and you have, say, like a really long sword or something. Um, you might not want this sword to be grabbed if the hand is also not detecting the socket, because Right, if you place this like this and your hand is over here, you might not want it to go in because this object is so long and this trigger zone is so large, you'll be you'll be you know, going into your shoulder instead of dropping on the floor or placing it on the table or something. So when you have check hand or overlap, it's also going to check to make sure that that trigger collider on your hand has detected the socket as well. So you can it's kind of like the hand is in or near the socket and the object is in the socket and then it can go in the socket. So uh, just keep that in mind if you have, you know, kind of like a, a body inventory and you're having trouble with large items going in there by accident when you don't want them to, you might want to check this box here. Okay. Uh, releases on hover. So this was added because I was copying, you know, the Boneworks, uh, magazine system where if another valid socketable object came into the trigger zone the existing held object would be ejected out so uh, these are enabled on the um, you know if you look at the smg ammo socket 
uh, this is probably enabled. Um, uh, maybe not by default. <clears throat> All right, so if you look at the tooltip, releases the current grabbable if another valid one is in range. So let's say if the ammo socket, I thought I had this enabled, but I didn't. But if say you brought the um, new magazine into the socket, this other existing one will kick out and be dropped. So that way a new one can come in quickly. So that was what releases on hover would do. Um, instant hand pose. Uh, because the grabbing system, you know, it's physics based. And you know, let's say you put your hand at an awkward orientation to the sword when you grabbed it. The sword would, you know, rotate into place due to physics. That way it's not teleporting and getting stuck on geometry. Um, but when you're removing, you know, object from, say, again, your shoulder slot, and you want to be able to shoot quickly, you don't want that slow physics process of the gun coming into its pose orientation relative to your hand. You might want it to snap into place where it should be relative to your hand instantly. So if you enable the instant hand pose, that will happen. And included in the framework when you're teleporting, I have some kind of logic going off that tries to prevent um, objects from getting stuck inside of the other colliders in the scene. So that logic goes off when I apply the instant hand pose to try to prevent, you know, the colliders from overlapping. Say your back is against this wall and you pull out a large sword with the instant hand pose on, you know, you might end up where the sword is overlapping the wall, but then I have some logic that will try to prevent that. Um, it's not bulletproof, so just keep that in mind. It is physics based and it might be janky, but for the most part, it's going, you know, it's going to work fine. Um, hold type. So we have two hold types. The original hold type, again, based off the Saints and Sinners, uh, when an object is socketed, if it has a rigid body, uh, the rigid body will become kinematic and its colliders will be turned into triggers, so that way they can't collide with anything. <clears throat> and then once the object is unsocketed, it will go back to its original kinematic state and the colliders will be re-enabled or no longer triggers, so that way they can collide with the world. Um, but that doesn't allow, uh, you know, collisions. So if on my Apple ammo socket, I want um, this guy to be, you know, remove rigid body, right? And why would that be? So essentially, the magazine comes into the socket. The original rigid body is removed. I snapshot the state of the rigid body. And then because the collider is on the magazine, will now attach to the rigid body on the gun, and now the magazine can interact with the world or you know anything else with physics. Um, and you might ask, why don't I just use like a joint? But joints are prone to stretching, especially if the you know mass of the jointed object is pretty low, like a magazine would be, and that might just look really weird. It won't look solid and stable. Um, but again, once the you know the object is unsocketed. Uh, the rigid body is added back with its original state that it was in, um, uh, you know, before it was socketed. Um, auto spawn prefab. I'm going to ignore that one. I, I really want to remove that. It's kind of just a problem. Uh, grab timeout is used in conjunction with grabs from hand. So if the you know, if you're holding onto something. And it comes into the trigger zone. If grabs from a hand is enabled, it's going to do what it sounds like. It's going to just take it from your hand. Now, you know, let's say you take the magazine out of this gun, right? Well, we kind of need a timeout, you know, that way it doesn't take the object out of your hand immediately when you unsocket it. So the timeout will, you know, once you remove the magazine or the socketed item, two seconds later, it is now allowed to grab from your hand again. So. Yeah, the timeout just preventing, you know, grabbing too soon from the previous release. Uh, grabbable must be held, so it has to be in your hand uh, before it can go in. That way you can't throw, you know, you can't throw something into the magazine socket. It doesn't make sense. You know, you have to bring it there with your hand, right? <clears throat> um, hover actions, so these kind of just go along with... Um, if you want to write code, uh, it's large socket. So in the large socket, socket has two hover actions that will happen when something is hovered or unhovered. And again, 
And if we just take a look quickly at the code here, um, subclass HVR sober, uh, socket hover action, uh, you can override hover enter and hover exit, and you're given the socket, the grabbable object coming in, and whether or not the filter is allowing it. That way you can, you know, respond to an invalid object, right? So again, this example scene is simply changing the material to red or green if it's invalid or valid. Um, and then, you know, like saints and sinners, simply scaling the little rings up and down based on whether or not the object is hovering or not hovering in the trigger zone. Um, so you can assign these uh, hover actions, or if you've given none, it automatically populates from any hover actions on the same object. <clears throat> uh, grab actions are kind of the same. So hover actions are based on the object inside the trigger zone. Hand grab actions are based on the hand coming into the trigger zone. So you can react to the object coming in, or you can react to the hand coming in. You maybe you want to do something different uh, in either of these cases. Um, so it does look like in the example scene, I did assign the hover scale based on the incoming uh, hand uh, itself. Uh, parent disables grab. Um, so what this means is, all right, so I'm looking at uh, the ammo socket would make sense. So the ammo socket is a child of a grabbable object, right? <clears throat> Uh, it seems like this is not assigned correctly. I must be assigning stuff in code. Um, hmm. Yeah, I think I'm assigning these variables in code. That's why they're not checked. Um, but essentially, let's say you have this ammo socket and you don't want to be able to put a magazine in if the gun is in an inventory. So if you check box parent disables grab and you can assign it you know the smg grabbable or the parent grabbable if you don't assign one i believe it auto populates uh let me just check yep so if you don't if you assign parent disables grab and you don't give one i'm going to look up the chain of the parent and find this parent grabbable uh, for you. So it's simply just a validation check when something comes in. Can it be socketed? If the parent disables grab is enabled and the parent grabbable is socketed, then it will not grab it. Um, so again, if the gun is in like a backpack or whatever. Uh, you know, I can just illustrate this right quick. Let me try and put this uh, magazine in. It will not accept it, right? But if I disable this checkbox so I'll be able to put this magazine in there so it took it in there um, so again just being flexible letting you decide if you want stuff to be socketed if the parent is socketed or not um, can remove grabbable well if it's true you can remove if it's false you can't remove it so maybe you want to eject this thing in code um, then you might want to just leave this you know as false so just letting you decide you want the grabbing system to work or the unsocketing system to work like normal, or you want a you know, manual code based release. <clears throat> um, the scaling here, uh, there's some scaling system that will scale your objects down. You know, let's check this pistol out, it's going to shrink. All right, so why, why, you know, why is it shrinking? Um, <clears throat> so, scale grabbable is enabled, that's why it's shrinking. And it's going to shrink, you know, based on the size. This is like saying, you know, how large is your socket? So, right, the larger it is, the bigger, you know, the object's going to be, and smaller, and so on. Um, all right, so this is how you define the socket scale for the socket. But what about the object itself? All right, so we'll just take a look at the you know, this pistol here. And we'll see on the actual socketable uh, component we have a scaling section and by default all objects have the used renderer bounds enabled so essentially uh, the mesh renderer has a bounding box over the mesh 
and the largest axis will be used to calculate that uniform scale. All right, so if you don't want the renderer bounds, largest axis driving the scaling, uh, for the most part, it probably will handle just well. Um, you can, you know, uncheck this and give it, you know, a size. Maybe you decided 0.2 looks good for your object. Uh, let's just see what that looks like. All right, you know, one. All right, so the larger the object, the smaller it's going to sh to scale down to fit into the or the smaller the ratio will be assigned to the actual scale to make it fit into the object or into the socket uh, visually. Um, so this is a scaling factor applied after the scaling. So if I, you know, 0.2, if I multiply this by three, it's going to be times 0.2 uh, yeah, times three. Um, don't really see any use for this, but in case someone wanted it, you know, it's there. Um, scale override, you can actually give it a box collider that will be used as a bounds. And for the most part, you probably don't need to do this unless you wanted to be picky about the sizing. Um, you do need this for skinned mesh renderers. So the bows uh, included with the framework are skin mesh renderers. Um, skin mesh renderer, renderer bounds don't report a value. So I you can give a scale override. If you apply the override, these other values are going to be ignored. Um, so you'll see here on, that's why I have a, you know, disabled box collider on the actual object. And able you can see it. Yep. So here, this box collider is saying how big this is. So that way, when it goes into a socket, it can scale down uh, uniformly. So again, Scale override, you can use it if you want to, um, but it will be required for uh, skin to mesh renderers, um, or you can you know remove renderer bounds and assign a scale size as well. That would also work for skin to mesh renderer. All right, so that's the scaling system. Um, let's just come back to the socket now. <clears throat> uh, can grab, stab, and grabbable. Uh, well, the framework has a stabbing system. If your object is being stabbed or stabbed, it's not going to be able to be socketed unless you left, you know, unless you allow it. Because uh, I might behave kind of weird since things go kinematic when they're socketed. Um, uh, sound effects. There's a priority system here. We have the you know grab and release sound effects. Uh, override takes precedence over a socketables sound effects socketed clip and unsocketed clip and this takes precedence over the fallback um so i don't think anything in the framework example scene has any uh thing other than the fallback if my memory serves me so we get this little metal inventory clink for every object that goes in here so again override takes precedence then the socketable clip takes precedence and if there's no override and the socketable doesn't have a clip, then this auto grab fallback will play for like a default, you know, sound. Um, filters, they'll be populated uh, on all the filters on your object when the game starts. Um, there's a filter condition you can apply if for some reason you wanted to assign multiple filters. You can have multiple filter components and you could put them into an and or or situation. Uh, this is not really necessary anymore because of the tag filter system has an and an or situation going on already. Um, so this kind of existed before I came up with the tag system, you know, after checking out you know, some other asset had this cool tagging system going on. So I'm going to borrow that. Um, but again, you can have many if you want to in an and an or situation. Uh, so it's, you know, flexible in that sense. Uh, distance source will uh, let you override where distance calculations are when you're, you know, sorting, um, you know, what object to pick based on their distance if, in case there's multiple in the area. Um, but most likely, if you centered your socket visuals, then the default transform position will work fine. Uh, post tag goes with the new post tag. Uh, system in 2.9. There's a separate video on that, so make sure you check that out 
uh, it lets you decide uh, where an object goes in this object uh, in the socket. So after an object is socketed, you know, is it up here? Sorry, let me click on the gun. You know, is it up here? Is it down here? Is it rotated this way? So that's what the posing system is for, and that's new in 2.9. There's already a video on that, so make sure to check that out. Um, <clears throat> Uh, disable collision, I believe that's on by true um, by default. So before, like I was mentioning with the kinematic, if you're in kinematic mode, a rigid body goes kinematic, and if disable collision is enabled, uh, all your colliders on your object will turn into triggers. That way, they can still be you know overlapped for other reasons, um, you know, or you can just leave collision on if you wanted to. But it's going to be uh, you know, on a kinematic object that can't move. So that's up to you if you want that or not. Um, <clears throat> debug scale, I think that just does a... Yeah, so if you want to check the scaling of an object with live, um, scaling fires only when something is socketed. But say I want to debug uh, the socket scale here, so let me just enable this guy. And I can start playing with... Uh, Looks like it's a toggle. Oh, you just click once kind of thing. Let's see. So let me just change the size here. Or scale grabbable. Increase the size. Tap this kind of like a button. And you can, you know, while it's live, just sit there and like, oh, okay, this looks good. Okay. Um, now that's kind of how the socketing system works at a high level. How all right, quick one coming back in. I missed a few fields on the socketable uh, posing and uh, poses and uh, socket orientation. Those are covered by the posing tutorial. Uh, the linked grabbables is pretty important here. Uh, so let's look at this SMG one more time. You know, it's a combination object that has, you know, one rigid body, but it has, you know, two grabbables. We have a grabbable on the foregrip and a grabbable on the grip. So the socketable here is on the actual you know, the, the grip grabbable. And <clears throat> again, you know, when a socket removes something or it's detecting that you've dropped something out of your hand with the grabbables must be held option, it's checking that it's in the trigger zone and it's looking for you to remove your hand. Now, what if your left hand was still on the foregrip? Do we want it to socket or not? If you don't want it to socket, you need to add this link to grabbable. So that this stabilizer grabbable reference here is the four grip on this SMG. So if any object in this list is being held, uh, when an object goes to be socketed, we're going to check this list and we're going to deny socketing uh, if it's being held. You know, because a four grip in this situation, your left hand or whatever hands on it can remain holding it, and you may want that scenario you know to continue. So just keep that in mind. Let's go through some of the other examples for socketing. Um, you know, like this chest, right? So it's kind of like, again, a Simpson Stinner style chest. Um, it's full of several uh, sockets, small sockets that can accept small items. And it has a component here, a socket container. You'll see that the sockets will populate when the game starts. And this guy is just simply managing the list of sockets for other components to use to know if hey, there's space or not, right? Um, so we have this collector guy, you know, socket container grabber. So this guy is just sitting here listening, you know, with a grabbable bag again, grabbable detection. And he's going to have a socket container reference. So as objects fall into this container trigger zone, it's going to ask the container, hey, is there space? And if there's space, and it's checking validity as well, and it's going to stick it in the first, you know, the first slot. So we just drop this in here. The, right, it fell into the collector's trigger zone. The collector said, hey, container, you have space? Yep, right here I do. And it's going to be socketed in code. All right. Um, I have a similar thing on the shoulder as well. Uh, uh, the shoulder grabber. Um, 
just like in Sense of Sinners, if you put a, an object over your shoulder and let go, it's going to go into the first open slot in your backpack. Um, so the backpack also has a, you know, a socket container on it. If we take a look at the uh, backpack object here, <clears throat> we'll see that the backpack has a socket container, which is populated at start again. When you don't populate, it's auto-populating all of the inventory slots. Um, and then on your shoulder, we have this uh, yeah shoulder grabber. Again, we have this trigger zone. Just expand that, right? So if you let go inside of here, it's going to go into your backpack if there's space. If not, it's just going to fall on the floor. Um, and then the shoulder socket, socket is a subclass. It has some special logic that tries to help prevent you from putting something in your in your shoulder if you're trying to throw it, right? So a simple dot product compared to the forward vector of the socket itself. If we have, you know, the object is moving at some rate in the same direction, then we don't want to grab it, right? Because your player's going to get pissed off if you're trying to throw something and it goes into your backpack, right? So that's why we have a special shoulder socket um, as an extra validation check. Uh, for that kind of thing. Um, <clears throat> all right, so uh, what other uses we have? We have, you know, this key key and socket thing going on over here. Um, so maybe you don't want to write code to detect whether or not a key entered a trigger zone. You could make use of the socket system for like, you know, something like that. Uh, if you wanted to, it's kind of a hacky kind of Use case, um, so you'll see that this lock socket uh, you know, is kind of sitting here waiting for the key to come in, and then when the key to come in, it you know, does some stuff, plays some sound effect for the key, sets some variables saying, okay, now this uh, hidden grabbable object is now able, enabled and able to rotate. Um, so again, kind of just ghetto using the socketing system to be like, hey, a key entered my trigger zone. You could totally write code for that, you know, a few lines of code. But again, you have to write code, and you some people may not be able to, to do that. So if you use the tag socketing system, you'll see that, you know, the socket here has a tag filter, tag for key, and the key in the door, you know, over here or on the desk. Again, tag socketable with the tags filled. And it's assigned as key and small items so it can go into the backpack. All right, so those are some of the use cases that you might you know, use sockets for. Uh, again, watch the socket orientation video that will help you decide how to set up where and what rotation an object will go um, if the default transform uh, values do not work for you. So. Hopefully that gives a lot more information on this complex subject. Uh...